The Liverpool dressing room is over that side, the away team is over that side, but Liverpool players always line up on the right hand side here, even though the dressing room's the other side, and the reason is when they run out of this tunnel, they always run to the right hand side towards the cop end. But on their way, they'll always touch the sign as a mark of respect and good luck. Liverpool players have done that since the you know the inception of the sign. But when Jurgen Klopp first came, he banned the players from touching the sign unless they'd won a trophy with the club. And there was only one player who'd won a trophy with the club at that point, um, Jordan Henderson. He'd won the League Cup in 2012. He's been here for a, a long time. Once they'd won the Champions League in 2009, all the players could touch it then. Let's touch on the way out. Yeah, that's it. Inside of Anfield, and we're to start the Liverpool football tour. Um, here's Jack, who's going to be our, our tour guide for the Absolutely. day. Yeah. And let's do it. Let's yeah. go up the escalator and let's check out what Anfield has to offer here. All right, so we're inside the concourse of Anfield, and we're approaching the window because across the way, across this park here. You actually can see Goodison. And I kind of want to hear a little bit more information about that, Jack. It seems like it's really just, what, a quarter of a mile away? Yeah, I mean, at most, half a mile. They're the two closest uh, stadiums in, in the Premier League, um, and they're separated by a park called Stanley Park. That was actually where Liverpool were going to build a new stadium. That was our previous um, American owners who were supposed to follow follow on with that it didn't happen we're okay. now owned by you know Fenway Sports Group John Henry and they've chose to redevelop this stadium which is great for us we get to keep the history of Anfield but the history of Anfield goes all the way back to Everton Everton used to play at this stadium before Liverpool for around eight years um, uh, the guy who owned the land was called John Holding and um, there's a statue a bust of him outside and he wanted to increase the rent, he wanted to make more money, he brewed alcohol, he wanted to sell his beers at the games to the Everton supporters and he was the chairman of Everton but their board, board of directors, they didn't like the rent, uh, the rent increases and ultimately they split from him and they decided to move over there and they built Goodison Park and started playing there from 1892. So John Holding had a, had a stadium with no team and he wanted to keep the name, actually Everton but he wasn't allowed, they took that with them. What he did keep was the blue kits. Liverpool actually played in blue kits first before we changed to red. And he decided to call our team after the name of the city. Liverpool Football Club, of course. All right, so Jack's gonna talk a little bit about the pitch down there. It's really, really interesting, brand new. Yeah, they've grown it elsewhere. They've grown it in a place called Lincoln. What they used to do was at the end of every season, they completely dig up the pitch, they'd reseed it, and they'd grow a, a, a new pitch, which would tie in with the 4% artificial. They've still got about 5% artificial, but they've grown a brand new pitch elsewhere. They've transported it here, and they've pretty much rolled it out like a carpet. And um, what that means is at the end of every season we're starting to hold concerts we've had elton john here recently so they can hold more concerts and if it gets damaged you know they can replace it or they can roll it up and, and store it while they do so so now that we know our history of anfield and got a bird's eye view of the pitch let's take a stroll around the concourse jack is going to point out a couple interesting aspects of its design and then we'll make our way downstairs to check out the dressing room, cafeteria, and players' tunnel. And they've actually, Brian, incorporated some of the old stand in the new stand when they redeveloped it. You know, we've got some of the old boards that oh, were wow. date back to, you know, the early 1900s. And just over on the left, I'll show you in a second, there's the original seats that were in the main stand, the original wooden seats that they were still sat in up until 2016. Really? Yeah. 
So the players on the match day, uh, the day before we play in Anfield, they'll usually arrive in their own cars, park in the car park, just out there, the nice expensive cars, and they'll get on the team coach, go into Liverpool City Centre, and they stay in a hotel together. That way the club know exactly what they've eaten the night before, what time they've gone to bed. Um, and you know, obviously for team bond and for tactics, and then the team coach will arrive here, usually about an hour and a half before kickoff. The players will get off the coach, they'll come through those doors just there, but the manager will go into this room, that's Jürgen Klopp's office just behind that door. And then it works well because after the game, after the players have eaten, they can get in their own cars and depart the night before and they can head off home. All right, so right this way is the area the players eat in? So yeah, we're, we're going on our way now to the, the dining area that the players will use after the game. But as you look around as well, Brian, you can see on the walls, a lot of the, the modern day players, not just the old, and that was kind of Klopp's brainchild. He wanted the players to see themselves on the walls for, for inspiration, to know that they're representing the club. And great quotes as well, even by Jürgen Klopp. This is a place for big football moments. Yeah, and you know, after the game, they'll come in here. No, no family, no friends, no wives, no girlfriends allowed in here. You can see it's quite a small room, but it's it's the players only and the staff, and they'll have their own chefs here. Um, different players have different dietary requirements for different reasons, different religious reasons, but they're getting good nutrition after the game here. It's like a nice little cafe almost. Yeah. yeah. And as I say, a lot of great photos of, of, of all of the players, not just not just the stars, you know, some kind of squad players, if you like. Yeah, everyone. That's cool how they do that. Yeah. And then it leads directly on to uh, Liverpool's dressing room now. So the current players, but then you also have the historical figures of the club as well. Yeah. Nice contrast. Yeah, very nice contrast. Yeah, so obviously, you know, the players have a certain position that they'll sit in. You can see their names above. They've even gone with the pitches. But these are quite sneaky. It's like a little walk-in wardrobe. The players can hang the clothes up there. The, the nice watches can be put in there. Uh, but as you can see, there's no locks on them. You don't need to be locking your, your belongings away from your, from your teammates. It's only Liverpool staff and, and Liverpool team in here. You've got the showers just around the corner. And then you can actually smell it today. They've got the uh, the jacu yeah. jacuzzi bath, the on. yeah, and also they've got three ice baths that they use all up in there. So you know the cold and the hot treatments very prevalent yeah. in, in in major sports for for recovery. Yeah, so you've got the home team dugout area here where the manager sits, the assistant coaches, the substitutes, and then the away teams is on the other side of the tunnel. There's only one difference between the home team and the away team, and um, it only comes into play really in, in the winter months, and that's these seats are heated 
and the away team's seats aren't heated. You're not going to go and pay extra money to, to heat up the, the away team's seats. Usually, generally, it's for, for injury prevention. You know, if you've got substitutes sat there, it's one degree raining the cold somebody gets injured you've got to go straight on the pitch it just keeps the muscles warm and the, and the blood flowing i don't know jack we've been to i've been to about eight stadiums on this tour so far and i think the pitch here at Anfield looks the best yeah it's like a carpet it really is like a carpet and like you were saying up there they can actually pull this off yeah they can cut out sections because there's parts that are grown elsewhere i mean apparently this costs six hundred thousand pounds but you can see that's you know you've got to have a great pitch they used to do pitch awards at the end of every season and liverpool used to win it a lot i mean you come during the week there's already always somebody repairing or cutting the pitch or tending yeah. to the pitch yeah so you've got the four stands here you've got the anfield road end you can see the construction's going on there that's going to increase the capacity to 61,000. you've got the main stand here that's our biggest stand um the sir kenny dalgleish stand used to be called the centenary stand they named it that in 1992 to celebrate our centenary year our 100th birthday um and then just a few years back they renamed it after great legend say Kenny Dalglish Liverpool player Liverpool manager and um, one of the best to ever play for the club but then you've got easily the most you know the most passionate supporters sit and, and, and have stood in the cop it's our most famous end um, and the name actually comes from the Boer War in South Africa British troops fought out in South Africa um, a lot of them were from this local area and they lost their lives on a hill called Spion Kop, which roughly translates in Dutch Afrikaans to Spy Head, Spy Hill. So once news got back to Liverpool, the local newspaper, the Liverpool Echo, they were the first to recommend the idea that Liverpool call our own, which this was just a muddy embankment back then, mm -hmm. um, call this the, the Spy on Cop, and nowadays we call it the Cop for short. They added the roof in 1928, which just added to the atmosphere. Obviously, back then there was no seats in the Cop, so some games you'd have up to 30,000 supporters stood at that end of the stadium. There was only two toilets. Use your imagination. I'll, t I'll tell you what they used to call this bottom part, the Yellow Mersey. So you can you can imagine what went on there, but it was a you know a great place of character. Um, that's where you'll never walk alone. Started to be sang from. It was one of Shankly's favourite songs, originally from the American mu musical Carousel. Uh, Liverpool band covered it, Jerry and the Pacemakers, in 1963. They released that, and um, Liverpool fans would sing songs in the charts. That was one of the ones they sang. Bill Shankly picked it as one of his favourite songs. Um, for 1965 desert island discs you know if you were stuck on a desert island what songs would you want that was one of the ones he picked and ever since it's been liverpool's official anthem yeah so this is the corner where trent crossed it into a really the famous match against barcelona where liverpool came back from a deficit in the champions league yeah we were obviously three nil down from the game at the new camp and it was looking quite bleak but that was one of those real Anfield nights where you know the atmosphere just absolutely carried the players to the next level Trent crossed it in here to Origi very quick quick thinking and it was a, a class goal and and you know we, we got there and we won it and you could argue it's thanks to the ball boy who sits right there who got the who, yeah, who yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah 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 exactly quick thinking on on, on all parts He's stuck. <laughs> I don't, I'll be stuck you here have to forever. Stay here forever mate. Yeah, it's all right. I'm, I'm gonna go back. To that. <laughs> A special thanks to Jack Rigby for showing me around. If you enjoyed this episode, Jack will be back again in the next episode as he gives me a football history tour all around Liverpool. And better yet, if you find yourself in Liverpool, here's how you can find Jack and book him for the ultimate Liverpool experience. I highly recommend it. I'm Jack Rigby uh, and as you've seen we've just been on a tour around Liverpool, the city and of course the football stadium. If you're ever in Liverpool, you want to do a Beatles tour, uh, a Liverpool city tour or a football tour, hit me up on Tours by Local site and uh, I can show you around.
All right, you heard Jack. Link is in the description below to Jack Rigby's tour here in Liverpool. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.